A very good evening to everyone and thank you for joining us today on this live session from Mahsa University Sojana Putra Campus. My name is Shafinas and I am the lecturer from the Department of Medical Imaging and I will be the moderator for today's session. So the title for today's session is the Nuclear Medicine Application in Medical Imaging and it is proudly hosted by the Department of Medical Imaging Faculty of Health Sciences. Dear viewers, Nuclear medicine is a specialized in, in radiology that uses a very small amount of the radioactive materials or the radiopharmaceuticals to identify any structures with a, a pathological condition. So it is very uh, non-invasive and very safe to the patient. So for today's webinar, it is very privileged uh, to us to have a very experienced speaker to talk on that. But before I proceed with the introduction to the speaker, let me share some of the information about the program that we offer by the Faculty of Health Sciences, Mahasa University. From the Faculty of Health Sciences, Mahasa University, we offer three departments. We have a School of Physiotherapy, Department of Environmental Health, and Department of Medical Imaging. For the School of Physiotherapy, we offer Diploma in Physiotherapy, Bachelor of Physiotherapy, as well as the master program in physiotherapy. For master of physiotherapy, uh, it is specialized in either neurology or musculoskeletal system. For medical imaging department and environmental health department, we offer both diploma and bachelor program. And aside from that, we are proud to announce that Faculty of Health Sciences have uh, recently uh, offered a new program, which is Diploma of Occupational Safety and Health. And other than that, we also offer a program uh, for bachelor degree in open distance learning mode, which is ODL, which is considered a very good opportunity at this time uh, since the movement control order. So before uh, I proceed with the uh, introduction with the uh, our speaker, let me uh, explain a little bit about uh, our speaker today. So uh, our speaker today is Mr. Lai Kim Roy. He is a nuclear medicine radiographer who is currently working at the Nuclear Medicine Center in Tangwe Medical Center. And it, it is also my pleasure to share with all the audience today that Mr. Roy is also the alumni of our medical imaging department uh, in year 2009. So he, is, um, he started working as a diagnostic radiographer in April for two years before he moved to Klang and he was trained in the National Cancer Institution and now Mr. Roy uh, is working as a full-time as a nuclear medicine radiographer which he operates the PET CT and PET CT machine. So to all the audience, if you have any question uh, regarding nuclear medicine, you can leave all the comments or the question at the comment box below and our speaker will answer the question after the presentation. So now let us welcome uh, to join us, Mr. Roy. Hi. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Mr. Roy. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Thank you, Ms. Shafinas, for the kind uh, introduction. And I really appreciate that. And yeah, good afternoon again. Thank you all for being here. Uh, indeed, it's a great pleasure to be here. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank Masa University, especially Faculty of Health Sciences. I'm humbled to have such an opportunity to share my experience with you all here. Okay, so thank you uh, very much for uh, taking your time from your busy schedule to share your knowledge and experience on the nuclear medicine with all the audience today. And I am sure that everyone will benefit greatly from this session. Uh, so, without further ado, I hand over the session to you. You can start uh, share your screen now, Mr. Roy. All right. Thank you again, Nisha Finas. All right. Okay. I'm going to share my screen now. All right, okay. Um, today I'm going to share a bit of my experience being a nuclear med radiographer. And today's topic is something that's really interesting. It's known as nuclear technology application in medical imaging. And through this uh, sharing, 
maybe you get to really understand what is the difference working in the radiology department and working in a nuclear med center. All right, okay. What is this nuclear medicine department or some places that call it nuclear medicine center? Or these places involve the application of radioactive substance in the diagnosis and treatment of disease. And scans at nuclear med center is different from radiology department as the emphasis is not just on imaging anatomy, but it's also on function, which is functional imaging and physiological imaging. So basically, uh, the radiographer in nuclear medicine, we, we operate two machines here. One will be the single photon emission computed tomography, which is the SPEC, and positron uh, emission tomography, which is the PET. So uh, the SPEC CT and the PET CT scan are the two most common imaging modality in nuclear medicine. Okay, today uh, we will focus more on PET CT scan imaging. Uh, if there's an opportunity in future, I would like to share more about SPAT CT as well. Okay. How does this uh, PET CT scan work? Okay, it uses small number of radioactive bacteria called radio tracer or a radio pharmaceutical to diagnose and to evaluate a variety of disease. There are three types of PET CT radio tracer here. The first which is the most common one, which is the F18, which is the fluorine 18 fluorodeoxyglucose. We, we call it as FDG. Then there are another two more here, which is gallium 68 prostate specific membrane antigen. So uh, it's called known as gallium 68 or gallium 68 PSMA. And the last one will be gallium 68 dotate. So this dotate is the link of these uh, two different type of one from tetra sectron dota to this peptide three octeotate so it it come together with the name is called gallium 68 dotate each of these radio tracer has their own functions has their own um, usage for scanning so fdg18 here we use it for general cancer patients while gallium psma we use it uh, for prostate cancer patient and gallium dotate we use it for uh, neuroendocrine tumor patients. Okay, now we focus on the machines. Okay, we will look into this PET detector here. All right, this is the PET CT machine in Sunway Medical Center. You look at the machine, it's very similar to a CT scan. But if you zoom in, okay. inside the PET gantry, there are detectors. Okay, uh, so you patient will scan a CT, then they will continue with the PET. That's where we will fuse the images and we call it as a hybrid imaging. And we will focus and we will look more into the detectors. Okay, there are, there are compartments in these detectors as well. Uh, the, there, will, uh, there is a scintillator crystal which is in front, then followed by a photo sensor. And these two compact, these two well, because it's one of the detector when they, uh, yeah, in this one detector, there are two compartments there. So this scintillation crystal are used to absorb and convert the high energy gamma ray into low energy visible photon. And the photon sensor is used to convert the light signal into electrical signal. Then this electrical signal are processed and to create the raw data, which is used to generate the PET image through uh, image corrections and reconstructions. Um, where is this gamma ray come from? I will explain more in a while, okay? All right, look at this uh, diagram here that I'm going to show. Okay, I'm going to explain to you all how is this gamma ray being produced and how is this detector. First, an injection, okay, of radio tracer into a subject, into a patient. The radio tracer arrive at the target organs or a tissue through a circulatory system after a certain amount of time and it participate in the metabolic process of the subject. Once that happened, because of the radio isotope in the tracer are not stable, so they decay during the metabolic process. So when they decay, it will produce positron. And this positron are generated and travel it will collide with the electron of the neighboring atom. So this is called an annihilation process. 
what is this annihilation process here? This annihilation is when an electron collide with, collided with a positron, then it will produce two photons. So this pair of photons, they will travel, uh, they will create a straight line like 180 degree. And each of this energy is 500, uh, five, uh, 511 kilowatt. So that's the energy that produce. Then after that, uh, then this, then this, this is where we learned just now about the detector. So what happened in the detector when this gamma ray produced? So the scintillation crystal are used to absorb and convert a high energy gamma ray into a low energy visible photon. So it happens here. Can you see? Okay. So in the scintillator, then when the gamma ray heat, then it will produce, it absorb and convert the high energy gamma ray and, and turn it into a low visible photon, which is the light. Then after that, the photon sensor will absorb the electronic signal, will, will absorb the light and convert it into electronic signal. Then from there, these electronic signal are then processed through a through a co is coincident unit to get a true event generated by the same annihilation which occur along the line of response, which known as LOR, line of response. Just now, as I explaining, where it produced the, the pair of photons, right? That's where uh, a line of response is happened. And all, all this will capture. So when it captures, so the raw data of thousands of uh, line of response are used to generate the PET image through the image correction and reconstruction. This is the entire detection flow. That's where the PET city images is produced. All right, the indications to do a PET CT. PET CT scan is very useful in detecting and uh, for staging cancer and metastatic disease as well because it can pinpoint molecular activities that have the potential to identify disease in its earlier stages. And the PET CT images help the oncologist to determine the next course of treatment. They can also show whether a patient is responding to the treatment. Some patients they will, after their uh, chemotherapy or after their radiotherapy, uh, then the doctor will, will refer them to do a PET CT scan. Therefore, uh, from there, from the images, uh, the oncologist can really determine or can see whether the patient is responding well to the treatment. Then uh, PET CT also use it for neurology, for Alzheimer's disease and movement disorder as well as cardiology department in coronary artery disease and myocardial viability assessment. But today, um, to share my experience as a nuclear med, uh, it's more on uh, handling cancer patients. It's more on uh, using PET CT scan to scan for cancer patients. And what is the contraindications here? Pregnant woman is the same as all the modality in radiology as well. The contraindications for PET CT is the same. Uh, pregnant women, uh, they are not allowed to do this scan. And elevated blood sugar level, which is above uh, 12.5, so which is not suitable to do, to do this PET CT as well. I will show you all the images later why it is not suitable to do. Because uh, when the sugar level is high in a patient's body, then there will be some uptake at patient's muscle. Therefore, it will, uh, it will create the, not a very clear images for doctor to review it. I will show you all the images in a while. So uh, yeah, muscle uses a lot of sugar that cause more diffuse uptake of radioactive tracer at the muscle. So then it might be uh, obstructed the tumor site. Therefore, it's really hard for interpretations. Okay, patient's preparations. Here are the few, uh, few important things that we need to do. Patient need to fast, all right? Then patient need to check. We need to check patient whether patients are diabetic. The reason why, because uh, one of the reason is because when, when patients, if patients is diabetic, we need to make sure patients uh, need to stop his or her medications before the scan. Uh, Otherwise, patient will get high. Um, patient uh, will get too hungry. Then, uh, uh, 
yeah, it's, which is not good for patients. Uh, yeah, there are no strainers exercise as well, at least for two days. And this is the same uh, reason as the sugar level as well, because when, you, when somebody do a strainers exercise, it will cause muscle uptake. And another thing will be, uh, okay, these three very important thing, okay, then the scan will take 25 minutes in the machines, which I will explain more in a while when you see about patient scanning. Okay, here are some example of uh, muscle uptake images. Okay, on these images is the optimal quality of uptake. Uh, this is one of the PET CT images. And you look at these muscle uptake images, you will see all, all this region here with muscle uptake. Therefore, it create, a, it create an images that is not clear and is so difficult for interpretation. All right. And when patients are here and patients are about to do scan prior to the scanning, this medication will be given to the patient before the scan. We will give a uh, gastrographin orally. We will give IV furosemide. We will give uh, IV bascobin and bomazepam as well. Okay, each of this medication that it will contribute uh, something to the scanning. Uh, first, gastrographin is like a um, it's like an IV contrast, but this is orally, so it will fill up uh, our gastrointestinal region then it will create a very nice uh, enhancement to differentiate between the adjacent organ. So that we, when we report, when doctors do reporting, they can tell uh, the difference from uh, pancreas and small intestine because of the enhancement that coming from the gastrography. Then this IV furosemide, we, uh, we, we would want patient to pass urine as well before the scan so that it will not keep the radio tracer on the bladder region that might cause a lot of obstructions to the images um, so that it's difficult for interpretations all right then I will, uh, IV bamazepam is for patients to relax the muscle uh, for the intestine for the uh, colon as well then bamazepam is for relaxing uh, to, so that patient will, will not uh, trigger any uh, shivering and will cause a lot of brown fat updates and all this will show in the images later and i will explain more when you look at the image okay this is the images here all these are brown fats because patient when in a cold environment patient will tend to shiver a, a lot so we will give a, a mass uh, we will give muscle relaxant mass uh, medicine for patient to relax so that it will not it will not cause uptake like this, like all this brown fat uptake here, that it, it will make it very difficult for interpretation. Sometimes, especially patients with uh, nasopharyngeal cancer, they, they got, sometimes they need to see the notes on this region. If with the brown fat, it could be an artifact. So it's very difficult for uh, interpretation for the doctor to interpret the images. Okay, let's go to the process here. All right, generally, as what I have explained, uh, all the modality in radiology department, they use it to diagnose tumor based on the shape of the organ. But PET CT scan can check metabolism and the function of the cell. Therefore, the scan enable more definitive diagnosis of early stage cancer because we are looking at the functional of the cell instead of the size or the shape. Patient first. The patient is injected with the radio tracer uh, like F18 FTG, gallium 68 PSMA or gallium 68 dotate, which is which will later undergo the scanning. As what I have shared just now, uh, F18 FTG is for a general cancer and gallium 68 PSMA is for prostate cancer and gallium 68 dotate is uh, for neuroendocrine tumor. Okay, minimum uptake time for uh, F18 FTG and gallium 68 dotate is around 45 minutes and gallium 68 PSMA is around 50. Means that after the injection, patient need to wait like 45 minutes to 50 minutes before their scan for the uptake to take place. One of the characteristics of this substance 
is its attraction to cancer cell and therefore it concentrate near cancer cell. Sometimes, especially like F18, FTG were also targeted as some active cell, example area with inflammation or healing process. Okay. The injected positron will then be interacted with the electron as what I explained uh, earlier when we learned about the detector. The electron and the positron will annihilate and created two gamma rays. And the gamma rays hit the scintillator, produce a flash of light detected by the photosensor. Then a collected data is used to generate a 3D model of a metabolic activities in patients being scanned. Finally, a post-processing combined PET images and CT images that acquired earlier before the PET scanning. And this, so uh, we will fuse the PET images and CT images together. Therefore, uh, sometimes you will hear people will mention that this PET CT scan will produce a hybrid imaging, means that it comes with both together. And yeah, the purpose of this CT we use is for localization of abnormalities that's seen on PET scan. After this, when I show you all the images, uh, you will see actually PET CT, uh, just PET images itself is very difficult to tell the local localization of the abnormalities. So it's very difficult to see the location. It's very difficult to tell where is the exact locations. Therefore, we need the CT and we need to fuse both of them together. Okay, patient position is like normal CD scan. Patient is in supine position on the scanning table with hands up, except for MPC. MPC uh, is nasopharyngeal cancer. Okay, or any cases with cancer cell at the head or neck region, then patient will put their hands, they will put their hands down. Test CT scan is used to plan, it's also used for, uh, plan for radiation therapy to treat cancer. So patient will be positioned with mask or a cast. These two help you to keep the body in still during the scan. Sometimes doctor will request a PET CT simulation, means that uh, doctor will use a PET CT scan images for planning for the radiotherapy. The, then this patient that will scan together with a mask or a cast that will cover uh, on the region, the affected region, so that patient will be still throughout the whole scan. Radiation protections for PET CT. PET CT scan has two components, a PET scan and a CT scan, which are done together. CT scan is used for localization of abnormalities seen on a PET CT. The radiation dose from such a scan can be low. We don't need a we don't need a high uh, high um, carry or, or, or a very clear uh, CT scan when we come to uh, do this fusion with PET CT. Uh, we just, the radiation dose, uh, the, 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 the radiation dose coming from this CT, uh, it, uh, it can be really low because we just need it for localization purpose. So therefore we use a very low radiation dose. Then the effective dose from a PET scan is modest and depends on the activity of injection. Usually the dose of the activity that injected is calculated based on patient's body weight. The, whether it's the FTG, uh, if F18 FTG or gallium 68 PSMA or dotate, we will measure based, based on patient's weight. Then we will calculate the radiation dose coming from this uh, radio tracer before we inject into patient's body. So half-life. In radioactive, the interval of time required for one half of the atomic nuclide of the radioactive sample to decay. So all these uh, radioactive tracer, this uh, radio tracer, they, they have, they have half-life, so they will decay according to the time. So for F18 FTG, the half-life is around 109.7 minutes. It's plus minus less than two minutes. And gallium 68 usually are 67.71 minutes. So it's around 68 minutes for it to reduce half. Okay, does a patient need to restrict his or her activity after PET scan? The isotope used for PET CT imaging decays so rapidly that after only 24 hours, 
The scan involves injection of radioactive substance which will lead to radiation exposure of person in patient's vicinity, but the amount of radiation is really low. The patient can carry out any activities without any risk to other with the consideration of limited contact with pregnant women or children. You see, um, usually uh, because of the half-life, because of the decay that is happening. So when patients, uh, when patients completed the PET CT, yes, there are still radiation dose in patient's body, but it will keep decaying. It will keep reducing because of the half-life. Therefore, patients can still continue to do whatever they, they can, but, but they have to, uh, because the radiation in them is low, but they have to consider limiting contact with pregnant women and children. Uh, yeah, because of uh, it might it might cause mutation, it might cause mutation of cell, it might cause uh, harmfulness to the fetus, the embryo, or the children as their cell is still developing. Therefore, uh, yeah, to therefore the usual activities. Okay, now is the interesting part. After explaining so many things, and sometimes it's so difficult to imagine what is this PET CT scan all about? What is this, this guy talking about like uh, uptakes? What is this PET CT images? What is the fusion images look like? Okay, let's look at some of these PET scan images here. Okay, all right, this is a PET CT images. Okay, can you, if you know, this is a CT scan image, which is the axial view. And this is the axial, oh, sorry, hold on. This is the axial view of a PET images here, all right? And this is the fusion image, okay? Fusion image is a combination of CT and PET image, and we will get a fusion image like this, all right? Do not be, uh, the color here is, uh, we can manipulate in the system, we can manipulate in our post processing. So the color is just an indication. It's not that every PET CT images will produce color as such, but you uh, that's that's a setting where you can select certain colors. Okay, it would the color is just uh, it's not an indication like oh every PET scan images will produce color as such. No, so uh, there there are certain setting, but the the amazing here. You can see this color is identified uh, uptake, uh, it identify a diffuse tracer and uptake at that region. So as you can see just now, as I explained, if it's PET city alone in the scan, it can can really hardly can can hardly tell where is the location. We cannot really tell uh, where is the exact location. Therefore, we need the CT scan images here. Then we fuse the image together to help the uh, nuclear map physician or radiologist to, to determine the location, to determine um, uh, the metabolism uh, of this uh, tumor cell here. Like CT itself, you can tell there's, there's a growth, you can tell the size, but we measure SUV, which is, as SUV is like an activity uptake on that region. So therefore we can tell the functional, the metabolism rate of that tumor at this region here. So we fuse the images together and we will, and we can produce a 3D images as well. Then we can manu manipulate the image into a sagittal view or a con coronal view. Okay. So you see, yeah, this is what I say, axial, coronal, and a sagittal view, okay? This is the, the uh, mid images where we already uh, fuse, then you still can fuse images, but in the mid setting, then you still can see this tumor here, then you can see tumor here. Because of the fusion, or you call it a hybrid imaging, now the images become so clear that doctor can have both, one to know the anatomy, the size, at the same time can know the functional and the metabolism uh, of the cancer as well, the tumor. So with this PET CT scan, it really benefits cancer patients. It, it really helps a lot of oncologists to determine the cost of treatment and to really uh, treatment as well, to see whether also to diagnose and see whether the treatment is effective to patients. Okay, so you see this is the PET fusion images, PET that fuse with CT, and this is a pure CT images.
all right, so that you can compare side by side. Okay, and I will show another uh, region of images as well. This is at the head, uh, at the, uh, the whole head region. Then you will see this is one of the MPC cases, okay, uh, nasopharyngeal cancer cases as well. Then you will, you see, this is just a PET image and this is a CT image, and this is a fusion images. So uh, with fusion images, doctor can really tell, uh, can see so clear with the location, can tell even the function or the metabolism rate of the, the cancer as well. That's why if we pet alone, it's very, very difficult to tell the exact locations. All right, this is, uh, this is uh, gallium 68 PSMA images. All right, okay. As you can see, uh, this is a prostate region at the prostate bed. So there's an update here. And, and this gallium 68 PSMA, why, why we use gallium 68 PSMA? Because it's so sensitive. Uh, the, the, radio, the pharmaceutical, the radio pharmaceutical is so sensitive to uh, prostate cancer. Therefore, it only targeted at uh, all this uh, tumor, all these cancer that are sensitive to this, uh, to this PSMA, which is the prostate uh, tumor. Therefore, the region of update will, will take place to, to see on the prostate region or elsewhere that with a similar or tumor behavior coming from a prostate cancer. So, so you see it only update here. And, and because uh, FDG contain glucose, so F FTG will update at region. You see an update at the bladder region because all this, all this region is functioning nonstop, is working nonstop. Because of FTG, it contains glucose and, all, and this FTG will target on all the active uh, cell throughout the whole body. It can be in your brain, can be bladder, can be in your kidney region. But uh, that's why uh, if you look at Gallium 68, PS, uh, 68 PSMA is only sensitive to prostate tumor, uh, prostate tumor agent. Theref therefore, you will not see update at the brain region. You only will see update at certain region that are sensitive to PSMA. So we would use that to do a prost for prostate cancer patients. Okay, and this is our uh, neuro neuroendocrine tumor and you can see uh, there are two different type of uh, uh, the one patient that do an FDG 18 and another one uh, patients is you uh, the same patients who will go through a uh, gallium 68 uh, dotate so uh, there will be still an update at the same region but as you look at it uh, the different uh, the different is you see there's no update in the liver region so so this can really help doctor to, to diagnose, to have a more a definite uh, diagnosis when, when they both carry out, because both are sensitive, both are uh, different to certain cancer, but, but because it's neuroendocrine, sometimes the behavior or the character of the tumor can be sensitive to either one of the uptake. Uh, one of the radio pharmaceutical or one of the radio tracer. It can be FTG, it can be uh, gallium 68 or that. So therefore, doctors sometimes will use both uh, radio tracer at a different timing uh, to scan patients to get a more definite outcome than a uh, doctor can really tell. But sometimes, sometimes, uh, it, uh, sometimes it can be negative at one of the radio tracer. It can be negative on FTG, but positive on gallium 68 or that, or it can be negative at another one, then if there will be positive in PET CT, uh, I mean FTG 18. All right, so that's all for my uh, sharing today. Uh, if you have any questions, you can feel free to ask. Shafinas, you are muted. Sorry. Okay, sorry. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Roy, for the very enlightening presentation. And I'm sure that all the audience enjoyed the session very much. Uh, so I think now we can move to the Q&A session. Uh, so we see the question from the audience from the Facebook. And 
Yeah, so this is the first question from Miss Sharmila. There are two questions from her. Uh, the first one, what is the difference between PET CT and radiotherapy? And the second one, is PET CT scan better than CT scan in terms of accuracy? So, Mr. Roy? All right. Thank you, uh, Ms. Shamila. Okay, let's look at questions one here. Uh, what's the difference between PET CT and radiotherapy? Okay, uh, PET CT scan, we use it for diagnostic and radiotherapy, uh, they will use it for uh, treatment for ter therapy purpose. So, uh, Yes, no doubt we work side by side, we work together. But uh, the, the difference here, one is for diagnostic, another one is for therapy. Mm -mm. Is PET CT scan better than CT scan? I, um, I, would, I would like to say they work side by side, they work together. Uh, I, there is no one above another in a way. Uh, still, we still need to do a proper CT, especially let's say for a liver cancer patient, we still need to do a proper uh, three-phase liver scan using a CT scan with a uh, high flow of contrast with, uh, with breath hole. You see a, a PET CT scan here, we don't do breath hole because the scan will take 20 to 25 minutes. So, uh, and, and there's no breath hole. Therefore, the, the CT image here, even though we can scan it with contrast, we, we do have PET CT with IV contrast, but the images will not be as clear as sharp uh, for CT scan when come to do a three-phase liver or three-phase kidney. So therefore, I think uh, these both uh, have to work side by side. There's no one above another. Probably, probably a PET CT is good when if let's say an oncologist like, oh, I would like to detect where is the primary or to look for the secondary, uh, then doctor will send for a PET CT scan like to, to diagnose whole body and to find out where is the secondary or to determine the stages as well. So uh, maybe that's where PET scan come into a picture. Yeah, but usually it work together. Okay, so uh, both are good. Uh, both can be, uh, both are accurate as well. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you. I hope uh, Mr. Roy answer your question, Ms. Sharmila. Uh, so we have the next question from Ms. Umi Maisa. Can PET function alone without CT scan? Yeah. Back in those days, uh, long, long time ago, uh, PET, it functioned by its own. But as you can see, when I share those images, uh, with PET stand alone, uh, it's so difficult to tell the anatomy, to tell the localizations of any abnormalities. So therefore, uh, now with the current technology, uh, usually we will fuse PET and CT together. Yeah, so it, the, the, there's a greater benefit when we do both together to get a better images. Uh, yeah, therefore, uh, I, I never really uh, operate a machine just PET alone. Because uh, I think nowadays with technology, it comes together, CT. Um, Mr. Roy, uh, mm -hmm. so the PET, uh, when it combined with CT scan, can we assume that it is hybrid imaging or no? Yeah, yes, yes. It's a hybrid imaging. Yeah. Hybrid imaging. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. that's, that's my question. Okay, so uh, we have the next question from Ms. Afika. Uh, the question is, what is the longest radio isotope that you use in the department? The longest radioisotope. Longest isotope. I need to understand the longest in terms of uh decay. The... Or yeah, I need to understand the longest. Yeah. Mm -mm. I think it is decay time or the half life. Oh. Uh, the decay time. The if it's for decay time here, uh, we we do have uh terra gnostic here. We we do therapy using uh using certain radio uh, radio isotope as well, like lutetium, and we do mm -hmm. have uh, yttrium as well. So this, these two uh, radio isotope that we use for treatment, it, it, lasts, uh, it lasts quite long, the half-life, as well as uh, radio iodine. Sometimes we use iodine to treat thyroid cancer. Mm -hmm. That will take days as well to decay. It's not like hours, but it takes days, yeah. Mm -mm. Okay, yeah. 
Mr. Roy clarified it is the key time. So Mr. Roy already answered the question. Uh, we have another question again from Ms. Sharmila. Uh, the question is, what is the difference between fat CT and SPAT? Thank you, Ms. Sharmila. This is very interesting. Okay. All right. Uh, PET CT and SPAC CT, uh, basically uh, the different source of energy coming from uh, the different source of energy that produced by this uh, radio tracer. Then, uh, of course, uh, when it comes to PET CT, we, we, are, we are using a high energy photons like uh, 511 five, 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 one, one kEV uh, photons uh, pos, uh, for, uh, for them that, that scan this. Uh, to do a PET CT and, and I mean, sorry, not photon, a positron, sorry. Okay, for SPAC CT, is, uh, we use technetium. It produces a lower gamma, gamma ray. Uh, therefore, uh, the machine will use it for all these technetiums, uh, all these scans that using technetium. Yeah, so different energy will go to, uh, uh, yeah, we will scan a patient using a different machines. Okay. Uh, I think this will be the last question for Mr. Roy. Um, how much is this pet CT machine? Or well, me, me <laughs> myself talking about the price or the cost no of worry, the thanks. machine? Yeah, thanks. Okay, I, I, I'm not too sure. It's around, the one that I know is around seven, if I'm not mistaken, it's around seven million to, to yeah, seven million. Seven yeah. million. Mm -hmm. 7 million okay. to 9 million, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. Okay, it is, can be considered as very expensive, right? Yes, yes, it's very expensive. Very, extremely <laughs> expensive. Okay, so I think, yeah, okay, we have one more question uh, from the audience for Mr. Roy. It is from Miss Marina Chong. Um, how long does it take for the training to be a nuclear medicine radiographer? Do you have specific um, training? For okay, uh, for for Malaysian, for in Malaysia, there's a requirement that uh, before we can work in nuclear med center or operate nuclear medicines, uh, uh, I mean, spec city or pet city, right? Uh, we need to attend 21 days in uh, IKN, Institute Cancer Negara. So uh, you need to attend 21 days. Um, yeah, training. That's, that's the training that you need to attend as a requirement to be a nuclear medicine radiographer. But uh, in my personal opinion, if if you have the opportunity, try to explore more. Maybe you can uh, learn more from radiology department, go and explore other machines, get a clear understanding how all these diagnostic machine works and functions before, before you decided or considered to join a nuclear med, uh, nuclear med department, a nuclear medicine department, so that the uh, you, you will learn uh, because nuclear medicine department or nuclear medicine center, the machines that we operate because it's a hybrid imaging, uh, it's a machine that, that come with uh, not just one component, but if we come together with CT as well. So if you, if, you, if, you can, if you have the opportunity to work in radiology, you get a clear understanding, especially how to operate CT scan machines, right? To understand how all these CT scan machines work, uh, to learn about uh, the contrast, and uh, all these, um, uh, how to recon images, uh, know all these things, then it will be a benefit for you when you come to be a nuclear medicine radiographer. Yeah. So it is safe to say that uh, it is better to have the experience as a radiographer, general radiographer first, then mm -hmm. it will be helpful for you to become a nuclear medicine radiographer. Am I right? Yes, yeah. But there's no right or wrong here, but then uh, yeah. it will be good that you explore or it, it will be it will be a uh, ways if if straight away uh, to straight away join a nuclear mat then uh you don't get to learn other things because mm -hmm. uh in radiology department there are there are a lot of things to learn and yeah. you can gain all this experience before you come and join nuclear mat yeah all right okay so i think we have come to the end of today's webinar mr roy so i again i would like to and also i would like to thank to all the audience that join us today i hope you have found this webinar as informative one and we look forward to your comments and your participation at future events hosted by the faculty of health sciences master university and to all the audience please visit our website at www.masa.edu.my 
or follow our social media uh, for more information. Uh, last but not least, please stay safe, practice street hand hygiene, and um, be well. On behalf of the Faculty of Health Sciences, I would like to thank you for your participation.